So I'm working on an animation at the moment that involves this kind of card loading state, right? Uh, where you just have basic sort of load-in states for different things. It's just a pass to, basically. Uh, and you've got this um, background little sort of loading state that happens. You sometimes see that on Facebook when uh, when you're on bad Wi-Fi. Uh, so this is really, really simple stuff. But I got to the third card just now, and it involved this kind of moment where you see lots of different stats. And the animation that I've gone for now, at least, is just that you have a random number that starts and a random number that it ends at. Uh, and then that loads in in a kind of staggered way. It's not the greatest animation in the world, but it's functional, right? And this is the aim of the tutorials that I want, I want to keep doing for you guys is that th there are many, like, many, many infinite things that you can do in Cavalry, obviously. And uh, sometimes it's really good to just focus in on a tiny little thing like that where this doesn't look necessarily that powerful but the principles that you take from this you can apply in lots of different ways uh, and this is as good as any I was mid flow and then I thought I'm going to try and do a tutorial on this so here we go so this is card three uh, and I've uh, made it into uh, just a really really simple uh, tutorial version of this rather than sort of trying to break accidentally breaking my current scene which I'm working on um, and the basic idea if uh, we can just group these as the background here so that you don't have to think about it um, is that we have a duplicator and we have a number inside of it which is being driven by a string gen generator. Those are the first, th that's the sort of the first thing to learn. So if I hide this a second uh, and I just do that for you, we can learn that as the first sort of principle of this. Okay, so let's start with a text layer. I've selected text here and I'm going to click somewhere and we don't need any text in here because we're going to be generating the text that's inside that's going to be numbers. Now you can do that from here which is the easiest place to do it really uh, but just an as another way like you would click value here um, but as another way of doing this you could hit command period and then search for generator and get the string generator and then connect it to the text shape like that. And I'm just showing you multiple ways so that you can understand it. Uh, we want to be connecting this to the string and we get the same thing. Now for organization purposes, if you watch my other videos, I like doing this. It doesn't do anything, but it sort of helps me think about the text shape is the main thing and all the things that are going on inside of it um, as sort of like child processes or whatever. Um, so let's go to this string generator, uh, which is a utility. And what we want is basically just two values, right? So we want zero here because that's the number of uh, the precision is the number of uh, places after the decimal place and then uh, this the padding we also want to be zero uh, because um, we don't want when we have a value of zero three to see that zero we just want to see a three right uh, this will become clear in a minute so <clears throat> if we um, oh and we also want to have a percentage sign afterwards here okay so essentially we want to blend between two values, right? We want to go from, say, 13% all the way up to 98%. Um, but we want those two values to be random um, so that when we then put that into the duplicator and we have a 100 of these, they're all random, right? Uh, and that's the beautiful thing about um, uh, cavalry. When you do operations inside of a sort of a child and then you put that into a duplicator, things like random uh, don't stay the same for every single child. They get sort of recomputed for each one. Someone again can probably uh, articulate that far better than me. I actually have a podcast with Ian Waters, the CTO of Cavalry, and he put it really beautifully there. I'll have to go back and, and view that. Um, but basically, uh, we want uh, a value blend, right? Um, which is basically blending between two numbers, right? Um, so for example, if we have one here and you know 93 here, um, let's just change that to three as well, just to show you it's really different. Uh, we want the um, uh, string generator to get those values, right? So we're going to pull the the, um, the value blend into the string generator, and we want it to be the actual number, right? So right now it's 93 because the value blend is at 100%. Uh, let me do that again because I could probably explain that better. So right now the string generator has no value, or rather its number is set by this. So we want to drive this number by something else. And we want to drive it by something we can blend between, i.e. two values. We've put those two values, 3 and 93, in the value blend. And now we want to drive this number by those values. So we can pull this value blend output into the number there. And now we have controls in the value blend where we can go from 0 to 100, which will take us basically, which will move between those two numbers. If we did 44 and 45, we would go from 44 and 45, which is not as great, obviously. So now that we've got that, what we want also is a sort of random number for the first and the second, because if we plug this into a duplicator right now, we're going to get 
lots of these 93%, right? And if we blend between these values, we're just going to get 3 to 93 again and again and again. So we don't want that, right? So let me just undo all of those things. We want to add a uh, random, right? So I'm going to write, I'm going to search for random and I'll call this a uh, value high. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the maximum at uh, 100 and the minimum, minimum at 50. And I am going to use a bias graph. Mm, do I need a bias graph? No, I don't think so. But just in case you want to know what that is, that would like bias the random so that it's all up near the 90. So if you had feedback, if you rigged this all up and then your, your art director or whoever was like, mm, the values seem a bit too random. Can we have it less random, more like high numbers? Like we want to show like things that are bigger. You could do that. Um, we might even do that, to be honest. So that's the value high, right? And I'm going to put that in here as well. And I'll just duplicate that and I'll call this value low. And uh, I will pull this down to zero and this to um, 50. Uh, let's do 49 just in case there are, for some reason you get uh, a 49 connected to a 50. Um, we wouldn't want uh, an, a, a random value to end up blending from 50 to 50, if that makes sense. So let's rewind a little bit. So as I showed you a second ago, we don't want to add this straight into a duplicator without using random because otherwise we get 93 all the time or 3 to 93. So we're going to drive this value blend the first and the second by random values, right? So value low is going to go to the first, and then value high is going to go to the second, right? And now you can see we have a new value blend for, for whatever reason. Oh, we could probably get rid of this. It doesn't actually matter, to be honest. Um, but if you wanted to do that, you could probably do that. Okay, I don't know how to do that. Maybe someone can tell me in the comments, but it doesn't really matter because our string generator what we did was we got rid of um, the precision, so those sort of extra values don't really matter. Um, but essentially what we've got from this, this random setup here is we, our start number is 4.057, essentially 4, and this one is essentially 54, and we can move between those here, okay? So what I'm going to now do that we've rigged this up is I'm just going to put this text shape in a duplicator, and now you see we've got this really nice setup of just random numbers. So I'm going to hold Alt and pull these in a little bit. And now all we need to do for our animation is uh, move between these two values. Really, really useful. So uh, just going back to my rig that I actually set up. Let's uh, turn all... Well, actually, we don't need to turn all those off. We just... Um, uh, let's put that inside of the second duplicate. So this is the rebuild. I'll rename this rebuild. So we're all clear what's going on. And then this is my original one here. Okay, so let's turn that back on. So the way that this one is working is, uh, it's basically we've got the number there with the random low and high and the value blend in the string generator. We covered that a second ago. And then the last two things for sort of like finishing that we've got here is obviously the, um, uh, the uh, we, we've got this value blend um, animation. We've keyframed that that's kind of clear to you. But I've also got this shape opacity as well, um, which is basically in the duplicator, if you go down to shape opacity, I've keyframed that. But why are they not all coming on at the same time? By the way, these random red numbers I'll explain in a second. Let me just turn this off and I'll explain that afterwards. So why are they not all coming in at the same point? And why are they all, if you look at the first one here, this is ending before this other one. So there's a kind of like a nice cascade going through. And this is due to something called shape time offset. And I'm terrible at explaining it, but I will kind of just show you what it is on the other one. <laughs> um, uh, so let's turn this one off and go back to our rebuild. And let's open this up again. So let's first get the animation on this value blend. Uh, let's go here. Let's keyframe the percent uh, from zero to 100. So now that I've keyframed those two points, I have this little uh, value down here. So I'm going to pull this down to zero and you can add uh, easing. I'm using curves by scenery, um, but uh, you can also dive into the graph editor and select and do magic easing and things like that, which is useful. So if I hit space, we get this. Um, I could probably make that a bit less, maybe something like that and pull it out a bit. Okay. So we've got that going, but now we want to do the, um, the shape of hasty. So we don't want to do this opacity here because that's the whole of the duplicator and it will just always fade on. You won't be able to stagger it. What we want is this property down here, which is shape opacity, not duplicator opacity. So because then we can make each child sort of uh, stagger through with that stagger behavior that you saw. So let me just keyframe this. I'm probably doing it in an inefficient way, but this is just the way that I do it. 
Um, I actually have a script which creates a really quick fade in, which I'll just show you. I'm going to try and publish it at some point, uh, which I'm running at the moment. Um, fade in from start. And you get this really nice fade in here, which is really cool. Um, anyway, we'll show more about that on this channel soon. Um, okay, uh, so yes, we want this one. Let me just rewind. Okay, so we've got that now, but because it's on the child uh, and we haven't sort of staggered it yet, uh, we're still seeing seeing the same effect, right? There's no there's no difference. So what we can now do, though, because we've done the shape opacity on the kind of the individual shapes, is we can stagger their input and you do that through something called shape time offset shape time offset is a way that you can offset the animation curve for duplicates on a per shape basis i still need to master how to explain that but that's what the the docs and the little tooltip tells you that um, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click and i'm going to add a behavior to this and you see this all the time uh, on other tutorials in cavalry um, basically we add a stagger and that allows us to kind of affect what happens right so if i if I play from here, you'll see that from the top right, uh, we basically have it fading in from the top right first. Uh, and if we stagger this even more, by the way, I'm going back in time here so that there's more delay. We get that one, then 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 that one and then that one finishes, right? Uh, I guess because we've staggered 111 frames, I guess. So if we go to 111, roughly, that would be where the last one first comes in. I think that's the way that that stagger works there. So we don't want that much. We want it to be sort of quite a bit less. Let's rewind a bit, um, maybe even less than that. But you'll notice also that it's coming in from the top right, and we don't really want that, right? So this is where the draw debug information that I turned off earlier can be quite useful, is if we turn this on and we select the duplicator here, you'll see that we're going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 here. Um, and our stagger is, uh, is therefore going, um, if we it's staggering I guess is where I, I struggle a little bit here but basically what we want is this to not go uh, this way from the, the we want the graph to basically be inverted sorry this is where the tutorial is not so good guys finding it hard to articulate um, but basically if we change that that graph of the way that it's staggered now um, we can see that we're coming from the top left as well um, and I'm sure there are other ways to play with these numbers um, like you could play around with flow rows and columns um, and so now you get this kind of left to right thing uh, and I haven't actually worked out yet how to really control these numbers so like say you wanted I don't know and you can think of your use case but my one is this uh, it's fine for now I basically want everything to go from left to right and that's roughly what is happening here um, so that's basically the animation now. Um, everything fades in, and uh, just by a tiny bit of control on the um, the stagger value, which is down here, um, we can kind of control that a little bit. So the final piece of this is the alignment, really. Uh, if you saw on my original one, let's hide the rebuild, and let's keep stagger inside of here to keep organized, and we rebuild this one. If we click on the duplicate, you can see that the numbers are over there, which is a bit weird. And that's because we've got this alignment on the uh, the duplicator. And that was because when I was trying to uh, sort of actually comp this in in the right place, I wanted it to size from the top left. And you can see that the pivot point is there. Um, by default, if we go to the, um, the rebuild, uh, duplicators have their central point as you start sort of, in, you know, uh, changing the width and height. Height? Height. I always do that. Uh, you have the pivot point at the, uh, in the middle, right? And you can do things like this, like, oh, you want the pivot point over here. Oh, that's really irritating. I've got to move it up. And then you can do math by like working how big it is, but that's not what you want to do. Uh, you want to do it in a really simple way. So I'm going to add the align uh, behavior, and I'm going to connect it to the rebuild, right? And what that allows me to do then is basically change where uh, the pivot point is, but in a really, really simple way, right? We're moving the pivot point uh, just by the size of the actual thing itself, which means that if we pull this to the left and this, uh, this to the right and this to the left, we've now got a uh, duplicator with the pivot point at the top left, no matter how many uh, uh, rows and scales and sizings we get. Um, uh, but what doesn't get affected by that align is the original sort of like positions of the um, the duplicates that you see in the draw debug information um, so that those are sort of retained and then the align affects that on top basically so that is the rig that we have basically and then you can move this here and you can say okay well I want, I want 
loads of them on the x-axis like this and I'm going to spread it out like this and then I want more on the y like this and I'm going to spread it out like this uh, and then you get your random numbers. So I hope that was useful for you. Um, I'll try and put this up at some point so you can download it from my site and uh, yeah see you in a tutorial soon.